Welcome to Chemistry. My name is Jeremy Krug, and in, in this video we're going to be learning about solution chemistry. When I say solutions, I'm talking about substances that are dissolved in other substances. So let's take a look at these two uh, solutions here. And it's obvious that one has a little bit more than the other. But other than that difference, what is the difference between those two solutions of copper 2 sulfate? Well, as you look at the two flasks, hopefully you can see that one of the uh, solutions, the one on the right, seems to be more concentrated. The color is a deeper color. It's, it, they're, they're both blue, but the one on the right seems to have uh, a higher concentration than the one on the left. Now, how are the particles that make up the mixtures different? Well, we can say that both of them have water in there, and they both have the copper 2 sulfate as well, but hopefully you can see that the ones on the, uh, the right, or rather the co uh, container on the right, has particles that are closer to each other. They're more concentrated, or they're more compacted. And so if you were to use one word to describe each of those mixtures, well, there are probably some words you could use. Maybe we could say concentrated would be a good word for the flask on the right. Or I say concentration, that should say concentrated. And perhaps the one on the left, we could call that dilute because it doesn't have as much of the copper 2 sulfate in there. So we're going to call this one dilute, like that. Now let's take a look at some simple uh, vocabulary here for this section for solutions. Now, whenever we have a solution, you have two main components in a simple solution. You have a solute and a solvent. A solute is the substance that gets dissolved into something. So if you're making salt water, for example, solute would be the salt. And the solvent is the medium into which the solute is dissolved. So uh, very often, we think of the solvent as being a liquid. So in this case, it would be the water. Uh, although you know solids dissolved into liquids, even though those are the, the solutions we think of the most, those are certainly not the only type. They're plenty of solutions that have even uh, gaseous or possibly even uh, solid solvents. That's a possibility too. But in basic uh, simple chemistry, we normally think of the solute as being a, a solid and the solvent is the liquid. Now water is the universal solvent. What that means is that if you have enough water and enough time, water will dissolve just about anything. And there, of course, there are some exceptions to that. But when we think of the general uh, inorganic chemistry lab, water is able to dissolve all kinds of things. And that's the one that we use most often in the uh, high school chemistry lab. Let's talk about four types of solutions. The first type of solution is a dilute solution. And that was the vocabulary word I had on an earlier slide there. Dilute just means it doesn't have very much solute in there. So here's another example of that copper two uh, sulfate that I showed you earlier. It's very dilute. Uh, that color uh, blue is there, but it's very uh, pale. There's not a whole lot of uh, intensity in that color. So we can say that it's dilute. We can look at that very easily and see that. Now, if we take a, a dilute solution and we keep adding more uh, solute to it, well, you'll have what we would call a concentrated solution, where now you have a relatively high amount of solute in solution. So once again, here we are back to our copper 2 sulfate solution. And it's still blue, but now it's a deeper color of blue, which shows us that we have a higher concentration in there. So normally you can uh, tell for some of these uh, colored solutions based upon the intensity or the deepness of the color that you have there. Now if you keep adding solute, eventually you're going to get to a point where you have dissolved as much solute in the solvent as you can. It's the maximum, and that's called saturated when the solution has dissolved the maximum amount of solute at that temperature. So here's an example. This is not copper 2 sulfate, but this is a different solution. Perhaps it's salt water or something like that. And we've dissolved lots and lots of that salt or that compound into the solution, into the water, and 
it's not dissolving anymore. And we can see that because there's some excess that's down here on the bottom of the beaker that's not dissolving. So that tells us that you know it, it's dissolved as much as it can. So that's a saturated solution. Now, is it possible to go over the max? Well, there is a, a possibility there. And that's called a supersaturated solution. And this is a very special case where we have a concentrated solution that has very temporarily dissolved more than the maximum amount of solute at that temperature. Now, how do you do that? How do you basically fill, or I should say dissolve, more than the maximum? Well, you basically have to almost trick the solution into doing this. You have to um, keep adding solute, just keep adding and adding, and then we have to raise the temperature. So you heat it up, maybe using some heat from a stove or from a hot plate or a Bunsen burner, and as you raise the temperature, you're normally able to dissolve more solute that way. Well, once you've dissolved all that solute, then you can cut the heat off and very slowly allow that temperature to drop. And once it drops back down to, oh, let's say room temperature, then you have basically tricked the solution into holding more than it's really supposed to at that temperature. And that's usually temporary because at some point it will crystallize out like we have in this uh, a picture here. And when it crystallizes out, it usually happens very quickly. So uh, that's another possibility when you have a supersaturated solution. Uh, fudge is an example of a supersaturated solution. Sodium acetate is an example of that where, we, where uh, we can actually make some uh, something called a chemical heat pack. So that's another possibility for supersaturated. Well, when we talk about these vocabulary words here, dilute, concentrated, saturated, supersaturated, those are qualitative ways of describing solutions. They're just using words. Well, let's put some numbers to this. We're going to actually calculate the concentration of a solution. And we're going to use a unit called molarity. Now, molarity is, by the way, it is abbreviated as capital M. And a molarity is just equal to the moles of solute, so that's moles, divided by the liters of solution that you have total. So that's liters there. So a molarity is just equal to moles divided by liters. And if you can do that equation, then you can figure out the molarity pretty easily. So let's try a couple examples with this equation for molarity here. Let's say we have a solution that's mixed containing 4.00 moles of sodium chloride in 1.50 liters of solution. Calculate the molarity. Well, once again, we're going to use that equation that we had a, a minute or so ago up here. Molarity equals moles divided by liters. And so the problem says uh, to calculate the molarity. So that means that's what we're solving for here. The moles, well, the problem tells us we have four moles. So that's going to go in the numerator. And then liters, well, we have 1.50 liters. So that's going to go in the denominator. So now we just have to divide that. And when you key that into your calculator, you should get an answer of about 2.67 molar. So that's the molarity of this. Let's try another example. I'll have a very similar problem, except I'm just going to change one word here. We're going to say 4 grams of sodium chloride in 1.50 liters of solution. Well, do you see what we're going to have to do? We know that molarity is still moles divided by liters, so we have to convert grams to moles. And so we're going to have to do that before we can even do the rest of this. So 4.00 grams of sodium chloride, and we're going to convert that to moles. And so we need to put one mole on top in order to do this. And since we're starting with grams, grams needs to go on the bottom of our conversion factor. And to find how many grams are in a mole of sodium chloride, we have to refer to the periodic table, add up those atomic masses, and it seems like it's about 58.44 grams in a mole. So I can cancel grams top and bottom. And I get that it's equal to about 0 0.0684 moles once I divide that out. 
Well, now I can find the molarity. Moles divided by liters. So I just plug that in. I have moles that I just calculated. And liters is straight out of the problem, 1.50. And so my molarity is about 0 0.0456 molar. So we can convert to moles if we're ever given grams. Let's try one more example here. A, a sample of sodium hydroxide solution has a concentration of 0 0.300 molar. If its volume is 1.25 liters, determine the number of moles of sodium hydroxide in the sample. Well, once again, we're going to use this equation. Molarity equals moles divided by liters. And we're going to plug these in. So we're this time we're actually given the molarity. So that's 0.3. And we're trying to find moles. So that's our unknown. It says the volume is 1.25 liters. So that goes down here for liters. So to solve this, we can set the 0.3 over 1, and we can cross multiply. So it looks like moles will be equal to 0.3 times 1.25. So moles would be equal to 0.375 moles. And so if you're looking at this, you might think, well, there's a shortcut here. And yes, that's true. If you're ever asked to determine moles, the shortcut is just multiply molarity times liters. And so you can do that uh, without having to, you know, set this up and derive it every single time. Well, I hope you learned a little bit about chemistry. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned anything about solution chemistry, please give me a thumbs up. And I hope to see you again on this channel where we can learn some more chemistry together.